Okay. Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the North Juanita. We're glad to welcome you back to our show again this week. And we're especially happy to have people like you in our audience, people who are interested in the issues that are going on in our cities. If you haven't watched our show before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area and learn about what are some of the programs, statutes, issues that that city has been dealing with and will be in the future. And then we always encourage you, if it's your city or even if it's not, if it's an issue that concerns you, jot down the phone number and the email of the person talking so that you can be in contact with them, particularly if it's your mayor and your city council person. Now tonight, we're very happy to welcome Regan Murphy from Robbinsdale, the mayor of Robbinsdale. Glad to be here. Thanks Great. for inviting me. Yeah, I'm glad to have you back again. Right. And to fill us in on kind of what's happening in Robbinsdale. Now, I thought we'd talk a little bit about some of the development that's happening in Robbinsdale. Sure. Uh, we've mentioned some of that, but why don't you talk about the ongoing development, something that's in process first? Uh, yeah, um, you know, I'll just talk about kind of the, the one of the apartment buildings. Okay. Um, you know, how a lot of times that things happen is, you know, the developer gets in contact with a property and they decide to sell it and um, they go through that process and um, you know they usually come to the city and you know pitch the idea oh, and right. here's what we're thinking to make sure they're in the going in the right direction and it's zoned correctly and so that moved forward and then there was you know various grants that were applied for because uh -huh. uh, with redevelopment in Robbinsdale and other suburbs there's usually some contamination oh, right, right, and definitely. some other just underlying issues that you, you don't have to deal with in the outer burbs where you're you know, building yeah. on an old cornfield. So uh, that usually extends the process and um, makes things a little more challenging. And you know, we use TIF financing on uh -huh. a number of our projects. It's a pretty important tool for us. Well, maybe we should just, uh, every time we talk about it, I will ask the person talking about it, to give a little brief uh, summary of the tax increment financing process. Yes, tax increment financing. Uh, it's a tool that um, we're, municipalities are allowed to use by state uh -huh. statute. Right. Uh, it is, is not a tax break. Um, mm -hmm. It does not come from um, taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a sense, you know, really what happens if just, I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. I am not, by no means we, an expert. Well, yeah, and we don't need yeah, a lot of detail. Super details. Right. Um, basically, if, if you just look at a property, let's say it's worth $100,000. Right. Um, but if it gets redeveloped and you put a new building on it, uh, it's going to be worth $500,000. Right. right. So that is going to have, a, you know, uh, more taxes. Correct. Right, on that value. And so that increment, that change, uh, you're using that, that taxes to kind of help um, make that, that um, development happen, which would uh, otherwise not happen but for um, the tax increment financing, meaning a, just a developer with their own financing would not be able to do that right. because of these extraordinary costs oh, right, that I just right. mentioned. And we always uh, hire a consultant kind of to vet the process uh -huh. to make sure it's usually a 25-year you know, period right. where those, those taxes are held and then um, help pay for that project. But that property is still paying taxes at that current level. Right. And uh, so then once that, that district uh, ends to 25 years, or it could be sooner, uh, then it goes back in the tax rolls for the, uh, the county, the municipality, and the right. school district. Well, and uh, many of our suburbs around here have needed that process because they're older suburbs, they've been around Correct. for a while. And like you said, they have their own issues to deal with when you start building on them. Yeah, there's, I mean, we've had, um, you know, buildings where they were going to redo the building. They get in there and they find out there's no foundation. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, well, okay, we have to tear it down. Um, there's you know, electrical, there's, there's so many old things that underlying right. that you find out. Not only that, um, you know, we recently had a scenario where there was a, the, uh, uh, an easement mm -hmm. from an old property owner so you know there's title work and all these different things that come into play but um, it's, it's an important tool and i tool and i'll say that it just about every new redevelopment 
uh, in Robbinsdale's involved TIF. Uh -huh. uh, and that also includes a lot of the new homes or scattered site oh, projects. Sure. We utilize TIF districts uh, as well. So, and they've, it's been very be beneficial mm -hmm. for us. So I'm Yeah, I think all of our suburbs that are close to Minneapolis need that process to help move forward in some areas. Yep, yep, absolutely. So the the area on 36th in France is your newest redevelopment area that's underway? Yep, that is our uh, most recent uh -huh. yep, redevelopment site. And then the other one would be the Travail one downtown building yeah. a new building. Maybe you can talk a little bit to that process, which is a little different. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, in that scenario, you know, we, we had a business that uh, was interested in expanding mm -hmm. and um, moving from one location to another with two different businesses, right, you know, right. kind of at the same time. And they happened to, per, you know, purchase a building that was, was in a TIF district. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the building I was talking about earlier. They right. got in there and there's no foundation and yeah. they weren't <laughs> able to do a, a rooftop and some of the other things they wanted to do. And uh, the electrical came to their building and then went to all these other buildings uh -huh. and it's just a just a, a big ball of knots that <laughs> is not, a challenge. Yep, <laughs> not gonna get undone. Um, so anyway, they um, are currently building right now, uh -huh. hope to open this fall. And so in this scenario, the building was uh, you know worth about maybe $200,000. Uh -huh. They're building a, a $1.4 you know, million dollar uh -huh. building, restaurant. Big difference, right? Yeah. Um, and not only that, this building was just featured in um, Architecture Minnesota. Oh. It's a, a publication right. on architecture. And I don't know for a fact, but I, I think it's safe to say it's probably the first time, certainly in recent history, that Robbinsville has been featured in that magazine. Oh, I bet. Right? So yeah. that's another nice thing about redevelopment is um, you know, having the ability to have these new buildings right. that are attractive and um, continue to make Robbinsville unique. Uh -huh. Are there any other projects building underway besides the apartments and the restaurant? Um, not that we have some municipal projects, but uh -huh. from a redevelopment standpoint, um, aside from, we do have one new business that is gonna be uh, coming to Robbinsdale. Uh -huh. um, it's gonna be called the, um, the Bird House. Okay. And it's gonna be um, kind of a bar and eatery. And so they're gonna just rehab an existing building, ah. and this is gonna be downtown Robbinsdale. And um, one of the, the owners of the restaurant is Robbinsdale native, so uh -huh. it's great to have that connection um, and that, that love for Robbinsdale, because right. it will show in, in what they plan to do. So um, that's coming, which is great. And I'm trying to think, uh, that, as far as like redevelopment, those are probably uh -huh. the, the top ones right there. Are there any areas in the city that you haven't done anything with yet, but you're looking towards the future? There are. There's, um, you know, sites that we'll say are ripe uh -huh. for redevelopment uh, as part of our, our plan, our right. vision. Um, there are some sites that we control, and there are some sites that are um, privately held by you know, other entities or individuals. Sure. So in, in those cases, it's up to, you have to have a willing seller. Yep. But we are starting to develop more and more relationships with developers and businesses and, um, and property owners. Oh, right. So we can kind of help facilitate or, um, you know, it's a great scenario when we can own the property and then we really ah, can kind of right. have a say in, in how right. that gets redeveloped. Yeah, there's a lots of different parts and pieces that you have to keep on top of for the city that people don't see. Correct, and not only that, it's a challenge because we want to maintain the authenticity of her uh -huh. downtown right. oh, definitely. and not dilute it, and that's a challenge because of economics. Uh -huh. uh, generally speaking, you know, you want to go tall, more units, uh, better return on the investment, right? Right. And so uh, we really have to be careful with the, the developers oh, and, right. and, and manage that so it doesn't get you know, diluted and not right. so authentic anymore. Not, and not continue to provide all the interest that people have in coming up there. Correct, <laughs> correct. Um, besides the restaurant that you talked about, are there any other new businesses that have come in recently? The restaurant is in the process of coming yep, in. Yeah, they're in the process of coming in. Um, you know, Marna's Cafe started out as kind of a breakfast uh -huh. and um, lunch. And so they're taking over um, where Piggy and My Pizza was. Oh. 
And so they're expanding, so they're going to have both a lounge and then a, um, an evening, um, you know, a uh, dining restaurant. Right. So which will be new. So they're just fantastic. They have just amazing food. Ah, right. So super excited about that. And I mentioned Pig, Pig and My Pizza. They moved into Travail's, uh -huh. uh, where Travail used to be. And they, they re redid that building, added kind of what they call the porch and a brewery as well. So they're also, mm. it's a, another brewery we have in Robbinsdale. That's been very popular lately. Uh, very popular. And their pizza has been uh, consistently ranked as some of the uh -huh. best pizza in the state. Right. So um, also pretty exciting to have that recognition for Robbinsdale. And they're, um, you know, one of the owners lives in Robbinsdale. They're just a great group mm -hmm. to work with. Um, and we couldn't be uh, luckier to, to have them. And so they've been great partners and, and not only with the, the city, but also uh -huh. our community organizations too. They're just, they're great people and they want, um, you know, these particular owners, they want to be the best at what they do. Uh -huh. So everything they do has just been fantastic. And I mean, that's what you want. You want to attract those types of businesses that um, kind of emulate the spirit of the town. Oh, yes. And yes. They, they do to a T. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, going, I'm just kind of going up and down right, town, town, right, thinking right. about uh, what else we've got going on. Um, other than, uh, yeah, I think those, those are the big ones, Anita. Yeah, it, you're been successful in the past and you're moving yeah. to get more success in the future. For sure, oh, I got another one. Oh. Um, Minnesota Makers, which is uh, right next to Fines on Broadway. So Fines oh, on Broadway yeah. is on the corner of right. 42nd and West Broadway, kind of an antique shop. And um, Minnesota Makers is right next to them and uh, it's a fantastic store. They sell um, art, not really art, but different things made by local artists. Ah. Um, anything from, you know, cribbage boards, shirts, postcards, ah. paintings, um, you name it. And it's mostly themed, you know, right. Minnesota things. And um, they've been great to have. Um, kind of adding to our downtown. So not oh, just food, right. but also right. some retail and, uh, you know, a nice gift shop. So... Um, they, they've they've been great, and then um, you know as you kind of go down West Broadway, I mentioned earlier the hardware store and right. um, Mark Wellna and his family kind of took over that hardware store, and they redid the inside. They expanded it, and offer more stuff. And everybody it, needs a good hardware store that can see your questions, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Get your fishing license, bird seed, yeah. whatever yeah. random yeah. screw yeah. you need. They're great. Um, well, I'll, we'll switch gears you bet. because. Uh, Robbinsdale has been working on treating their water, some water treatment plants. Yes. Let's start with the history leading up to why you're doing something. Yep, so Robbinsdale's unique. We get, uh, our, our, we have our own water supply, uh -huh. um, which we get from an aquifer below the city. Our other surrounding suburbs, uh, Golden Valley, New Hope, Crystal, they get their right. water from Minneapolis right. via the Mississippi River. And so, uh, our infrastructure is aging. We have three water treatment plants right uh -huh. now, and they are just costly to keep up. Oh, right. And the rest of the infrastructure, it, it needs to be replaced. So we looked at two options. Do we get water from Minneapolis, or do we continue to get water right. from the aquifer? So we hired a consultant, and basically the getting water from Minneapolis was uh, several million dollars more. Oh. Uh, it wasn't as easy as just kind of plug it in, right. you know, plug and play. Uh, there's a, a lot of additional infrastructure that would need to be built ah. in order to get water from Minneapolis. And um, also having our own control of water oh, is, that makes a, is key. It's right. a revenue source for us too. So um, we opted to do our own, um, continue with our own water and go from three facilities to one uh -huh. water treatment plant. And that would also include a new water tower as well. Ah. So where will the new water treatment plant be? So we just voted on that last night, as a matter ah. of fact. Uh, we had several different um, work sessions, meetings, and uh, public hearings and work sessions with uh, the uh, residents and neighborhoods that were involved. But Lee, near Lee Park, Okay. so on 36th Avenue in Lee, and between the baseball field and Lee Square, ah. there's a, a, a place that's centrally located. Okay. And, um, has enough room to allow us to build a facility, but also enough room to allow us to try to help mitigate um, 
the you know having that new building there as far as landscaping oh, and being able to do right, different things right. to kind of minimize uh, the disruption to the neighborhood. Right. Yeah, you wanted to kind of blend in, not stand out, I'm sure. Yes, and that was a commitment we, we made to the residents in that neighborhood is that, you know, it wouldn't be this just big brick monstrosity right. of a public works building that we really wanted to make it look like it belonged there, like right. it was part of the neighborhood. So it's going to have a lot of aesthetic features that are you would find in a home, not a uh, public works building. And then, um, you know, spending more money on mature landscaping, so uh -huh. you don't have to wait. 14 oh, right, years for right. a tree to cover up, uh, you know. Right, something. Something, to correct. Hide it, right. Yeah. So, ha have the city drawn the plans for the building now, or where are you in that part of the process? Yeah, and that was kind of, um, no, it's a good question. That's, we first had to decide where it went. Right. Um, and from there, we can, uh, it's back to the drawing board, right. in, in a sense, now that we know what space we have to work with and um, what underground infrastructure mm -hmm. needs to um, take place. So that's kind of the next step is um, the consultant that we're working with will um, build plans and okay. we can start getting into the specifics. So that you go to an outside group to Correct. to put the plans together in a different group to build it? Or yes. It, okay. Well, the, uh, it's, it'll, it might be a little bit of both. Uh, um, helping kind of design it and, and build it. But um, you know, one thing that we're gonna do is we're also gonna soften our water, uh -huh. which we currently do not do. Uh -huh. And that was one thing that certainly we got from feedback from residents oh, is they, you know, Robinsdale, the water is, is hard and they wanted it softened. And we looked at it, and it from an environmental standpoint too, is that um, by softening the, our water with lime, uh -huh. with the new facility, it'll remove a lot of that salt uh -huh. that people are currently using to soften their water right. um, from the, the system. Sure. And so um, that'll, that'll be a benefit too. And it'll go down for a long time into the future yeah, too. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. I mean, th this facility is gonna provide you know, good, clean water for 50 plus years. And so will there be a new water tower to replace the ones that you have or can one of the ones you have already be used? Um, no, so we, we actually have, um, you know, a water tower over by North Memorial. Uh -huh. I, it's kind of tucked in there. A lot of people don't know it exists. Of course, our water tower downtown. Right. And we've got a big kind of green um, water holding tank that's right next to it. Uh, of course, our water tower is, uh, you know, very iconic. Right, right. If you look at, you know, what few postcards there are of Robinsdale or, uh, you know, a lot of other imagery that involves right. that water tower. And so our, our plan is to keep that water oh, tower. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Of. Yep, that ta that water tower holds 250,000 gallons, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. And with the growth of Robinsdale and the demand, um, it's it's well below what we need. Um, so we're looking to add a 750,000 gallon water tower, which um, is the size of the one on Highway 100 in Brooklyn Center. Oh, okay. You could kind of um, reference. Right. Where that's going, um, we haven't dialed in on a location. Mm -hmm. it, again, not as easy as it, one would think. Certainly we won't take any homes or businesses, so that, mm -hmm. that really only leaves a few spots. And we don't want to put it you know, smack dab in a neighborhood. And, <laughs> right, right. And so we've got a couple spots that we think are gonna work well, where it'll be, um, you know, not, it'll be visible, but not you know, by mm -hmm. Robin's old residents you right. know, across the street from their house and uh, you know, a central location that would, that would work well. So that, that's something that we still have to decide. Well, and, and your water system is aging too, so it's probably a good time to be doing work on that, I would think. It is, it's, it's actually with the, the growth that we have, um, it, it is a good time. And that's one thing about living in older suburbs is, is dealing with that. Right. And um, it, so it, it needs to be done. And we've been planning, planning this for, Oh gosh, at least eight years. Yeah, I, I don't think the people in our cities realize how much behind the scenes work has to go on before they see something. Correct. Um, and something that a lot of our cities are doing, and I know Robinsdale does, is scattered site housing. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can explain what that program is for people out there that yeah, have no, heard the term or don't even know what it's about. Yeah, so we have in Robinsdale, we have the 
REDA, the Robbinsville Economic Development right. Authority. And as part of um, the budget every year, we have a levy uh -huh. for Housing Redevelopment Authority, and that funds the EDA and our scattered site project. Right. Which basically means, you know, there's opportunities to buy uh, older homes, uh -huh. or um, maybe it's a, a house that uh, had fire damage, or it's just old and wasn't taken care of. Oh, right. So we can buy those homes. Uh, we can, you know, level them, create a, a nice site to build a new home, and generally we'll uh, we'll sell that uh -huh. lot to a builder, um, or you know, a private or an individual that wants sure. to build a house. And it's great because it helps us uh, upgrade our housing stock. Definitely. And because one thing with Robbinsdale and uh, I know Crystal, we've got a lot of post World War II right. story and a half homes, and you know people want larger homes for their families. Right. And so we kind of we'll call move up housing, if yeah. you will, because we have a lot of starter homes, and you know we a lot of get a lot of great families, and then you have kids, and then they want to move. Yeah. They want to stay in Robbinsdale, but we just. We don't have a lot of right. homes for sale. Right. Our housing stock uh, just, it doesn't have a lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. Just kind of good and bad, right? right. You got the right. stable Both community, ways. people want to stay here. And so this allows us to, to create some, some um, larger homes that uh, can fit the needs of other people and families. And then some money comes down from the federal government to the Hennepin County, doesn't it? That help, helps with this process? Um, our, you know, our or is yours just set up differently? Ours is just set up differently. I, I mean, generally ours, um, we do just through right. um, outright purchase. And, um, you know, that's that's how we've done it. But I I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's yeah. some federal programs. Because there's lots that, of programs around. Yeah, for sure. Definitely on the loan side for, right. you know, new new buyers. But, uh, you know, when I, was, when I was elected, I mean, we had close to 20 uh, vacant lots. Ah. And um, I think after 2007, 2008, we were having, gosh, triple digit foreclosures. Yeah. Uh, I think we had last year less than 10 foreclosures. Ah. So that's good news. Right. And I, we have very few lots. They are uh, selling quickly, which is uh -huh. great. And um, we, but we, we constantly acquire, you know, whenever right. we can here and there. Well, and it's a good program for all of these older suburbs to, mm -hmm. like you said, keep up the neighborhood, keep up the appearance of your city. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we, when I moved back to Robbinsville, we moved into a, um, a scattered site, site home. house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, so we had kids and, you know, I wanted to move back and it, it worked out great. So I am a, uh, a beneficiary of that yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. Several of the suburbs I know have the same program yeah. and are uh, happy to keep this, do this kind of upkeep for the community. Yeah, yep. And it, it helps, you know, home values and so mm -hmm. really everybody benefits. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yep. And then uh, just briefly, maybe we can talk a little bit. There's an issue that you see in the paper all the time about mm -hmm. affordable housing. Yes. And maybe talk to what's behind that issue. What, what is... What are they trying to accomplish, mm -hmm. and how is that affecting your suburb? Yeah, I think part of the affordable housing is the, well, the rapid growth we're seeing in mm -hmm. Minneapolis-St. Paul, and the uh, just there's market forces at work too, uh, as far as inventory and, and what currently exists and what's being built. Right. Uh, just looking at Robbinsdale in itself, uh, when it comes to affordable housing, uh, we feel as a council that we have. Uh, pr probably more affordable housing than many of our neighbors. Yeah, I would think so too. Yeah. Much of which is you know, what they'll call naturally occurring right. affordable housing. You know, the, like I mentioned earlier, the right. story and a half homes, right. which are uh, very accessible. Uh, we've got numerous apartment buildings that um, um, a wide range of incomes and uh -huh. ages available. And you know, so the two apartment complexes that we're building are market rate. And those are the first market rate apartments we've had. Well, oh. they're the only ones, they're going to be the only ones that we currently right. have. But, you know, it's been the, it's probably the 60s or 50s since the last apartment building right. was, was built. Um, aside from Broadway Court and you can, our, some of our senior housing. So uh, we feel like we have a really good mix. Mm -hmm. and, but with, and, you know, other suburbs, um, you know, they might, you know, need to add some of that affordable housing. Because yeah, it is in, needed. In the Hennepin County, is 
kind of overlooking this to the Met Council? They are. They are, you know, attempting to look at what is currently available. Uh -huh. And then, you know, as far as redevelopment goes, what opportunities are there? And there's mm -hmm. incentives uh, to uh, add some affordable um, housing to various projects. And I think, you know, with light rail, there's opportunity there we, that makes sense to have oh, right. affordable housing and the component um, near transportation. So, um, you know, at this point, we, we feel like we've got a, a good mix. And, um, but it's something that it, it is important. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, I think a lot of what's being built right now is, you know, market rate or higher. And I think there's, um, needs to be space for affordable housing Workforce housing is another term thrown oh, out there. Oh, right, right. Yeah, it's kind of a, a continuum yep. of affordable for people that have a hard time finding any place yep. versus people just starting out and Correct. what they can afford. Yep. And we, you know, uh, we realize as city council that we, we, we try to do our, um, our, our best to, uh -huh. to um, add to that. You know, with, let's see, a couple years ago, Claire Terrace, uh, we built, um, or partnered, we, we did not build it, excuse me. Right. We partnered with um, Claire Terrace, and that, that facility is on 36 in France and houses um, individuals that struggle with homelessness. Oh, and, right, right. And um, HIV. So we, uh, we have um, tried to do our part. As uh, small as we are, we, we know there's a need. Right. And uh, that project's been, it's been very successful, and it was, it was needed. Mm -hmm. so. And so, so there, your council from time to time talks about this topic and mm -hmm. figures what makes sense for your city. Yep, we do. It's 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 kind of a mix. It it depends where, when, what, mm -hmm. and um, you know who's involved in the project. So it's right. there's a lot of little components to it. But um, as a, as of late, the uh, you know the market has indicated a, a need for some market rate housing right. in Robson, and, and we need that. Um, it's, it's, you know, you got move up housing. This is, you know, move out housing, right? You've got right. all these, <laughs> these uh, parents that are empty nesters. Oh, right, right. And they want to stay in Robbinsdale, but they don't want to have a home anymore. They don't want a home to have to right. take care of. And so this is going to be a, a product for the first time ever that's going to allow that, that option. You know, we don't have big town home. Right. You know, complexes or we don't have single level um, you know, built on slab right. kind of townhomes for something that might have a knee, you know, knee replacement or whatnot that doesn't want stairs. Yeah. So these apartments kind of fit uh, fit that need. And I. Well, I want to thank you very much well, for Anita, sharing your time and your experience with our audience out there. And we'll, and then remember, if any of these issues resonated with you and you're a Robinsdale resident. Go ahead and contact Absolutely. the mayor. And if, it, if you're from another city, call your mayor or your city council people and see what they're doing on that issue. We're glad that you've been with us and we'll hope to see you again next week. Bye.